going to be talking about zero waste community planning today. Uh, the first question is, what do we mean by zero waste? And the uh, uh, key phrase we talk about is uh, reduce, reuse, recycle. Uh, if we were really reducing, reusing, and recycling, we'd be at zero waste or darn close. So zero waste is all about focusing first on reducing and reusing, then recycling, composting, and redesigning the rest. Um, there's a uh, definition of zero waste adopted by the Zero Waste International Alliance. Uh, zero waste uh, has three key components. All discarded materials are designed to become resources for others to use. We don't want to burn or bury them. And zero waste will eliminate all discharges to land, water, or air. This is the only peer-reviewed, internationally accepted definition of zero waste. Um, the sustainable resource management concept um, has a tagline of reduce, reuse, recycle to zero waste, and that's why we're highlighting uh, this is all about zero waste and sustainable resource management. There are global principles that have been also adopted by the Zero Waste International Alliance. Uh, these are for zero waste communities. Uh, there's 14 of them uh, adopting the zero waste definition, establishing goals and timeline, engaging the whole community, managing resources, not waste, program funding, education and outreach, zero waste assessments, uh, residual separation and research facilities, ending subsidies for wasting, zero waste businesses, and then there's four additional pieces that were simultaneously developed by the Grassroots Recycling Network as keys to zero waste, at the same time that the Zero Waste International Alliance developed their community principles, and those are new rules and incentives, extended producer responsibility, zero waste procurement, and zero waste infrastructure. One of the first things that we underscore is that we need to have someone ask that there be a zero waste goal and plan, and that can be an environmental group, a staff person, an elected official. The state could challenge someone to do it. Um, uh, we found that um, oftentimes no one thought to ask to have this done. Um, a simple way of getting started is including zero waste as a sub-goal in sustainability or climate change plans, and particularly if you link it together with sustainable resource management and zero waste, um, that is a great way to go. A typical plan scope <clears throat> uh, for do developing a zero waste plan includes the following steps. Um, reviewing existing data, policies, and programs to get a sense of the existing system, uh, figuring out uh, the public participation strategy, how you want to outreach to the public, what type of public meetings or task forces or focus groups um, you'll do. Uh, service opportunities analysis is looking at what are the gaps in services that are uh, missing in the community that would be needed to get to zero waste and uh, all those gaps are opportunities for someone to provide the service. Uh, figuring out what policies, programs, and facilities are needed to provide those services, and then looking at the economics and their impacts, and development of an implementation plan, including a timeline, and low-hanging fruit for a quick success. Another way of looking at uh, comprehensive zero-waste plans is upstream and downstream. For upstream, looking at um, manufacturers doing clean production. Uh, product uh, being redesigned is a really important part of zero waste. Uh, we're trying to get uh, anything that's put into the marketplace to be reusable, recyclable, or compostable. Um, and if it's not, to redesign it to accomplish that. <clears throat> Downstream is the basic reduce, reuse, recycle. Uh, compost is uh, part of uh, recycling oftentimes, and the concept of resource recovery parks. As the community principal said, we need to engage the whole community, and a uh, quote from the community principals is, don't leave zero waste to the waste experts, because they're the ones who got us here in the first place. Um, and to do that, you really need to involve all organizations that provide services, uh, for uh, a zero waste system and uh, involve and challenge all those in the community, residents, businesses, colleges, universities, schools, everyone to participate in the planning and to pursue zero waste at home, at school, at work, or play 
as much as they uh, can. One of the key uh, first steps is uh, evaluating what is in the discard stream, identifying the source, amount, type, and value of discarded materials, focusing on the highest amounts, the total uh, volume or uh, tonnage uh, numbers, depending on how you have that calculated, uh, the highest value of materials, and the most toxic materials for developing uh, the most important programs that you want to implement in the short term. Um, for communities, you can collect that data locally or get data from comparable communities. In California, for example, every community uh, is listed on the state website with detailed data available from statewide waste assessments that were done. And uh, even if you're not in California, uh, you can use that uh, California data for comparable communities, which I've used in uh, other engagements outside of California uh, that uh, did not have uh, local waste assessment data. So you want to know your discards, preferably by the 12 market categories that are listed here. Uh, the 12 market categories are um, the uh, broad categories uh, for selling the materials as commodities, and the entire stream can be divided into that. On this chart, polymers is referring to primarily plastics and tires. Ceramics is referring to uh, rocks like concrete and asphalt. Uh, and putrescibles is referring to food, scraps, uh, things that putrefy. Then once you know what your discards are, uh, looking at the value of those discards, um, that's often done by talking to the local recyclers, reuse uh, businesses, uh, to get a sense of what they would buy the material for in the marketplace. Um, you can also go to grn.com, the Global Recycling Network is a good source of uh, market price information. There are other trade journals uh, that are also uh, good to amplify on this, uh, but those two uh, approaches will get you most of the data that you're looking for as far as the market price per ton for these 12 market categories. When you multiply that out by the amount of tons uh, per year for the different types of uh, uh, materials, you get a total value of the discards. And that's a really impressive uh, number. Uh, when you show the total value that's being thrown away, uh, people start uh, really listening about how do we get to zero waste. Knowing your discard sources is important, uh, looking at uh, residential versus commercial, industrial, institutional, construction, demolition, cell fall, um, really will help define your program. Uh, in some communities, self fall is about 70 to 80 percent of all the materials in rural areas like Del Norte County, the northernmost county in California. Um, in LA, it was only 10 percent. So that will vary the most. Typically, residential is about a third, as much as 40%. Uh, commercial, industrial, and institutional is usually on the order of 60 to 70%, and C and D fits in depending on uh, how much construction activity is going on in the area. From all of that analysis uh, comes the service opportunity analysis. This is an example of the output from Austin where after looking at uh, for all those materials and values and looking at where uh, you could discard materials uh, in the market categories, uh, we identified these particular uh, categories of materials as things that required more services to be provided. And this is what helps define what types of new programs, new policies, and new facilities are needed in the community. In Los Angeles, we came up with a menu of incentives and policies that looked at these five key categories, upstream, downstream, changing the culture, green business, green buildings and jobs, and management of residuals. Uh, these are typically the categories uh, needing to be addressed in uh, the plan uh, and looking at how to change the policies. Uh, in Hawaii, um, Rick Anthony led a team to develop on the Big Island of Hawaii, um, a zero waste plan there a couple of years ago. And after um, engaging with the community all over the island, 
uh, came to agreement on these four new rules and incentives, producer and retailer responsibility, uh, required source separation of designated materials, uh, a resolution calling to get all the compostable organics out of the landfill, and a construction and demolition ordinance uh, requiring reuse and recycling of all that material.